So you were definitely smart. Some smart people I haven't talked with you guys. Nobody's any smarter than you are. So we got to get back to the basics. And the basics is family. And what I want us to make a commitment to do, I want us to make a commitment. When we talk about a family, understand what a family is. Number one, it's a black, an African American man and an African-American woman. Say it That's now. my ideal of a family. With little African-American children that we're building to create excellence, to be the best in the world. That's what I call a family. So when we talk about a family, we're talking about that unit. That unit is 6,000 years old. We were brought here with that unit. When we were enslaved, we try to maintain, even in slavery, we tried to maintain that unit. And we got through it, as bad as it was. Slavery was a crime. I don't want us to call it anything else, and I want us to stop covering up white people and trying to make them feel comfortable. Slavery was a monstrous crime. And the criminals who enslaved us got rich off that criminality. America wouldn't be nothing if it wasn't for our brothers my ancestors and yours. All this wealth you see running around, people talking about the United States and wealth, we built that wealth. So let's, let's stop this nonsense and call a, a thing a thing. It was a monstrous crime. And they had 240 years of breeding, raping, selling us, trading us, breaking up our families, doing all of that to make money. Let's be clear on that. Let's yeah. stop cleaning that up and trying to make it comfortable. You see right now, if you begin to tell the truth, all of a sudden all the white folks start talking about this critical race theory. No, it's information about what y'all did. Right. <laughs> Let's deal with the truth. It's what you got out of this. We're going to tell that. Our ancestors demand that we tell what we went through. We will not ever, ever, ever cover up that crime. We must understand what that crime did to us. We don't know our history. We don't know our, our original culture. We have to create a new one. It's a good one, because I'm here, and you're here. Isn't that a... Well, we had a lot of one before we were brought here. Behindy. And that, uh, that culture uh, is yeah, a culture it. of the world. I want y'all to understand. So here. I'd like to say so in our family, the first ending. thing we yeah, want to so do with our children, we want them to know at least five so most on, important okay. things when they're little babies. I want you to tell your children that we are the first human beings on the planet. Everybody on the earth is an African. Everybody. Some of them might be white, yeah. some of them might be Asian, some of them might be yeah. Hispanic. <laughs> They're all Africans. Right on. We are not separate from anything else. Africans are the foundation of human life on the planet. That's why they brought us here, y'all, to build all this wealth for the Spanish, the Portuguese, the white Americans, the British, all of them. That They brought us here with that understanding. They knew that. We built the Americans. All of us did, are from these different African nations. And so, the first thing we want our children to know is that we're the first human beings on the planet. The second thing we want them to know that we're the oldest and the most civilized people on the planet. We're the most civilized people on the planet. Let me share something real quick with you. When the Europeans came to Africa, they ran into nations that did not have prisons. I want to say that again. Yeah. Our African nations did not have prisons. They didn't know what that was. They had no such word as pimps. No such word. It's not even in the culture. It's not even in the language. No such word as orphan children. That's not our culture. All our elders are elders. All of them. All old folks you see is your grandparents. All our children we see, these little babies here, they are my grandchildren. 
And if they're doing something incorrect, it's my duty to correct them. That's our culture. So we had no prisons. I want us to be clear on that. Our culture didn't understand that. The second thing is that not only did we create that kind of civilization, but all the technologies, I'm so, I'm, you know, I was did, doing some research. One of the good things about being an elder that's in retirement, you get a chance to learn more. So I've been in my, my new university that's been on the internet and everything else. And what, I, what I just found out, all the major mathematical equations, algebra, all of that, geometry, all of that was established in Egypt. All of that established in, in, in Egypt was amongst the most blackest people on the planet. Dark-skinned people that look like the dark-skinned people right here. Y'all look like Egyptians. And see, what has happened is that white supremacy has covered that up. They make movies with white folks. You know what the white folks in, in the Sahara? You know better than that. It's 120 degrees there. And they talk about they built the pyramid. Are you serious? <laughs> you know, all we need to do is just ask, how you, how you can stand 120 degrees and building pyramids and you can't even stay outside your house without what do you call it? Lotion? Okay. Sunscreen? So so we got to bring our children to know that they are the inheritors of the greatest civilization that is on this planet. Uh, every one of our children, just, just don't tell them about slavery. Slavery is just a short moment in the history of our people. It's just a short moment. We, we know for sure Africans have been on the continent for at least 300,000 years. Slavery has just been, what, maybe 400 years? That's a short moment in our existence. And so if I'm your if I'm your oppressor, I don't want you knowing that. I want to tell you about slavery. And I want to tell you how good it was for you. That's what your oppressor does. So that's just the third thing I want us to do with, with, in terms of our children. Tell them. Tell them. They are born in excellence. Nobody can do anything beyond what they can do. Our kids can do everything. When you take them to school, I'm going to tell you how smart our children are. When you take them little four-year-olds, bring them in there to meet the, 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 the kindergarten teacher or the, what, what's the other one, preschool. Your little kids are looking at those teachers. They done already scanned them. They know when they don't like them. They know when they don't like their parents. They can smile at them. They can do all of that. And the first thing they'll tell you when you get them home, they'll say, that teacher don't like us. <laughs> and you know, you, we, we like some, you know, little sick Negroes. We'll say, well, yeah, shut up and get quiet. And, you know, go on in there. And a little boy, a little girl is telling you, how am I going to learn something with people that don't like me? And they don't know nothing about us. They don't know our history. And what they're going to give us is white supremacy. They're going to tell us about Thomas John Jefferson, the old uh, slave master molester. <laughs> That's what they're going to tell you about. So tell our children that they're the most brilliant human beings on the planet. And they are. Yes, they are. The fourth thing I want us to do is go back to a moral standing. Our culture is based on a moral standard. We just can't do anything we big enough to do. Stop having, stop saying to our children, you free. You can't be free without knowledge. If you don't have no knowledge, what do you know what's right and wrong? Oh, it's cute. You know, they can cuss. You just a bad parent. And so let us let us teach our children. If you're a Christian, teach them the Christian values. If you're a Muslim, give them the Muslim values. You know, if you're a, a traditional Africanist, give them Ma'a, the seven virtues of truth, justice, righteousness, balance, harmony, and order. Even if you're a Christian, give them that. Give them Ma'a. Even if you're a Christian, even if you're a Muslim, 
give them my up. If you don't believe in anything, you have to understand that everything runs by nature. That's why we were blessed black. We are the, the nature's children. We are. And the world won't be in order until we get it back to order. It can't get back to order as long as we got a mindset of a European. We will not get there because we want to be them. And that world is on its way out. So when they start talking about, you know, uh, we getting replaced. No, we didn't do it. The Creator did what they had, what is what is due. Whatever cast out comes back. Whatever you do to others, return to you. It's just the law. All the Christians in here, you know that. So nobody replaced anybody. What you did is you reap what you sow. That is it. And so I want to also say uh, these things I want to ask our brothers to do. All our men in this audience, I want you to do two things. All the men in this audience. I want you to take time and go to the school board because you got Nazis and uh, what's that group that Trump had at the, uh, the it's a new, what do you call them? It's another name for it. Proud, Proud Boys. The Proud Boys is at the school board. They are. They're, they're in it. <laughs> they are the police. <laughs> but, but at least we should be doing this as men. I'm, this is a, a, a statement to the men. Sometimes men, we have to be men and we have to stand up as men. If you got the Proud Boys and the Klan and all that sitting at the school board, we doggone sure we have to be there ourselves as men. Does that make sense? Yes. I know the little sisters going to say, well, we go there too. You can do that, but put your boyfriends, your husbands, your, your brothers, your sons, tell them to be your protector. That is their responsibility. Yes. We love you. We want we want you here. We love you. But we have to have some men to show up when the clan shows up. We have to have some men show up when the proud boys show up. And whatever level they come on, we gotta be on that level too. Come on now. Do I need to say more? Whatever level they come on, we need to be on that level too. We must love ourselves as much as they love themselves. We must love ourselves as much as they love themselves. And so the final thing I'd like to say to all of you, let's do this all uh, weekend. This, on this, this stuff should be a weekend half right what here. we're doing right here. <laughs> a weekend half. I would like to see West Fresno. West Fresno. I would like to see West Fresno. Get back to the Golden West Side. Y'all don't remember that. Some of y'all probably don't hear. I remember when the West Fresno was the Golden West Side. I'd like to see that again. Where else? Where else in Fresno would we be? Where else? This is the only place. So we got to make Frank H. We got to make all of those, all of those structures. They got to be our structures, and we got to support this community. We got to support the politicians if they write. Make sure we're in control of them. We gotta do all that we got to do for this community. Our kids gotta have somewhere, some place that they can connect to their own culture and their own identity. And then finally, I wanna call my my daughter up here. Come on up here. My little flower. Give her a hand. This is my little flower. I like it too. I, I like it sometimes, maybe not all the time. I'm versatile. You know what I'm saying? Janice is my daughter. She's my daughter. She's my number one daughter. And so I want to I want you to I want to tell you how much I appreciate you. Invite me here to school. And Brother Floyd, where is Brother Floyd? Oh, he's in the car? Oh, okay. All praise to Brother Floyd. Give him my best regards and he's gone. Uh, the, and the last thing I want to say to everybody, everybody repeat after me. You know, I'm still in the Afrocentric stuff. I'm still into that. I will die with that. That'll be me. <laughs> so I got to leave y'all a little African, a little African words. 
And then we're going to come, then I'm out of here. I'll sit down. In the closet, in the computer room. Oh, how many of us will uh, participate in Kwanzaa? Uh, no, no. I, I want everybody to participate in Kwanzaa I, I, I at the end of this year. The the computer room. And so we want y'all there. We're going to we're gonna keep our, our, our institutions, our holidays, Juneteenth. We're going to keep those, keep those alive and well. So I want you all to be there for Kwanzaa, for Juneteenth, for all those things that define us for our children. And so this is my words I want to leave. I'm going to say again, these are the virtues of my art. I want everybody to repeat them. I'm going to give them to you and repeat them. This is how we civilize.